Okay, so in this video, we're going to be solving for the consumer and producer surplus. And so we have these equations for the consumer surplus. It's given by the demand equation minus the equilibrium price integrated between zero and the equilibrium quantity. And the producer surplus is equal to the equilibrium price minus the supply integrated between zero and the equilibrium quantity. Now we're gonna look at a graph of why these integrals are the way they are, but let's set up our problem first. So we uh, have a situation where a certain product has a demand equation that is given by that is given by the demand equation 220 minus four fifths x squared. And the supply equation for the same product is given by 76 plus one fifth x squared. Uh, now in some of these examples that you'll find in textbooks, some of them will involve uh, linear equations. Some of them will involve nonlinear equations. Uh, different strategies will need to be need to be used to solve in each of the cases. Um, but we're going to uh, think about this conceptually uh, first. Now, the supply and demand equations, uh, typically what you want is you want, in the market case, you want them to be balanced. You want them to be at equilibrium price. And that is where the producers and consumer surplus uh, calculations come from. So let's look at a graph of these two equations. And... If we look at the graph here, uh, this red line is going to be the demand equation. So this is our demand uh, in terms of the quantity. And this blue line here is the supply in terms of the quantity. So our horizontal axis is the quantity and the vertical axis is the price. And where these two lines cross, that's the equilibrium value. And that equilibrium value is marked here by this horizontal line. The area under the demand curve up to the equilibrium position is the consumer surplus. And the area between the supply curve and the equilibrium position is the producer's surplus. Now, if we think about our integrals, we're integrating for the consumer surplus, the area between our demand curve and the equilibrium position. So thus the area between two curves integrated between our top curve, the demand and the bottom curve, our equilibrium. And we're integrating this region up to that equilibrium position, which would be our Q sub zero. And this value here would be in our equation, our P sub zero. So P sub zero, and then this value right here, this would be our Q sub zero. And so we're integrating from zero to there because we can't go back beyond zero because we don't sell less than zero quantities. And then for the producer surplus, the equations are flipped because it's the equilibrium position that's on top and the supply equation that's on the bottom. So it's the equilibrium price minus the supply equation, and then again, integrated from zero to this equilibrium quantity. So that's how those equations are derived. And so now in order to actually set up our problems, we need to then solve for whatever those values are um, for our uh, equilibrium quantity and our equilibrium price. So we're going to set our two equations equal to each other. Uh, we have 220 minus 4 fifths x squared is equal to 76 plus 1 fifth x squared. And if we move the 76 over to the left, 220 minus 76 is 144. And if I move my four fifths x squared to the other side of the equation, I just get x squared. And I'm gonna end up with x is equal to um, 
12. Um, and it's worth noting that it, I've replaced X uh, from graphing it. Um, in Desmos, they like X's and Y's. And I, my original equations were in ter should be in terms of Q. Um, yes, let's make those in terms of Q. So that's the quantity in terms of uh, the price in terms of the quantity. And so that gives us our equilibrium quantity. And then to plug in uh, to get either equation to get our equilibrium price, uh, 12 squared, we get 144 over uh, five. And I get 104.8. And this is a price, so having a decimal is not a big deal. So it's essentially a dollar, $104.80 each. So that's our equilibrium price. And so then we're going to go ahead and set up our integrals. So our consumer surplus. Uh, the demand equation is the 220 minus four fifths Q squared. And the equilibrium price we said was 104.8. And the qu equilibrium quantity was 12. And so if we integrate that, Zero to 12. Uh, let's simplify a little. 220 minus 104.8 gives me 115.2 minus four fifths. Q squared, the Q. And so we get 115.2 Q minus, we divide by a three, we get four over 15 Q cubed. And then we evaluate from zero to 12. And so we're gonna get 115.2 times 12, minus four over 15, 12 cubed. And throw that into our calculator. and I get 921.6. And then we repeat this process with our producer surplus equation. Now this one we do have to be slightly more careful with because we have to subtract our supply equation and our supply equation was 76 plus one fifth Q squared. And the equilibrium price was 104.8. And we're integrating from zero to 12. Now we do have to distribute our negative sign. So zero to 12. 104.8 minus 76 is going to give me 28.8 and then minus 
1 over 5 q squared because we have to distribute the negative. And then when I do this integration, I get 28.8 q minus 1 over 15 q cubed. And then we evaluate that again from 0 to 12. And we end up with 28.8 times 12 minus 1 over 15 times 12 cubed. And we get 230.4. Now we can see from the graph that this makes sense. That the consumer surplus would be larger than the producer surplus because we can see from the graph that the area in this example is in fact larger. Now there's one other thing to consider here and that is that the total surplus would then just be the sum of these two um, it's just the area between the supply curve and the demand curve. Now, um, one thing to kind of keep in mind, um, the hardest part sometimes of these problems is actually solving the equation for the equilibrium price. Um, the integration sometimes is not terribly difficult. Um, often these problems involve polynomials or things like that, but um, Sometimes where students get most tripped up is if we have one linear equation and one quadratic equation um, for the supply and demand. Just remember that if you end up with the quadratic equation, you have to put everything on one side of the equation in order to factor it. Um, you can't factor it with Q and Q squared on one side and a constant on the other. Um, and in okay, occasion, certain occasions, you may need to use the quadratic formula to solve it. Um, when these equations are nonlinear, uh, usually you have to use a little bit more um, algebra that you may not have used recently uh, in order to get the value of Q and therefore the equilibrium price. And sometimes it may be worth it to graph the equations and then use Desmos or something like that, uh, or your TI calculator in order to get the intersection.